Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another Pokemon Unite video featuring Zahora. Dude, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but this Pokemon is still a dominant force in Pokemon Unite. You see him kind of often, but ever since Gengar nerf, you'll see him. You see him more now in the jungle. I don't know if it's just me or not, but he's everywhere for my ranked games. He's everywhere for Masters tier. He's he's all over the place. Standard doesn't matter, man. You will see this Pokemon all over the place. I think Gengar kind of fell off a little bit, you know, opposed to my last Gengar video, you know what I mean? I just, you can still do well with Gengar, but again, you don't see him very much. So now we open the door for other junglers, whereas Zahora, you have um, Greninja, you know, downright the best jungler in the entire game, in my opinion. Fastest jungle clear, hands down. Got Greninja, got Lucario, some other, some other junglers. But... When you sit here and you sit down and you play Zahora, you honestly, you can see how much damage he does and how quickly he can just go ahead and delete people. Now, you play against him, and sometimes he just, you know, ends up killing you in less than like two seconds, give or take, and you, you get frustrated, right, because you don't realize how much damage he actually does. Or you're just like, wow, that's overpowered, blah, blah, blah. Once you sit down and play him for a little bit, you actually get to learn his kit and learn when his damage windows are and how much DPS he can actually deal with certain abilities. Like, I'm coming up here for this gank on this Raboot. At the end of the day, like, I see Ralts is having a problem because he's by herself. Score Bunny is off doing Score Bunny things. Absolutely nothing, as usual. So Ralts is having a tough time. So I come up here, and we just go ahead and just destroy this Raboot. Like, I mean, I had red and blue buff. He had red and blue buff. But he was paying attention to me, obviously. Give Ralts some space a little bit. But, I mean, she gets... You know, kind of killed here. Or, sorry. Almost get kind of killed here. You know, it is what it is, man. She gets out, but at the end of the day, I'm still here proceeding to deal damage here. Can we pick this up as well? We do actually pick this up. Because when I play Zahora, I, I like to play jungle, but I like to play super aggressive. Because I've learned now that playing this game for a while, since it's been out for like 30 days now, for a month, give or take, I've learned that, again, just like a lot of other content creators, a lot of other people who sit here and play this type of game here. The first eight minutes of Pokemon Unite mean absolutely nothing. Nothing. Because as soon as Zapdos spawns, regardless of how you do in the entire game, it doesn't matter. Zapdos is what dictates you win or you lose. And in a MOBA aspect, that's horrible, right? At the end of the day, it's it's not great. Like. Hopefully, instead of just nerfing and buffing Pokemon, they end up doing something with Zapdos or giving us new maps and stuff to play around, because that'd be great. But in any case, man, Zahora is... I'm probably butchering his name. It is what it is. Not my favorite Pokemon. You know what I mean? I like to play him. That's about it. But we're going to call him Zero for the day. So what Zero does, he has so much mobility in his, in his kit. It's pretty absurd. Like you have more, 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 you have. God dang, bro, you have more mobility than you, Lucario. You have more mobility than Gengar. You have more mobility than every other Pokemon in this entire game. And of course, some people deem that very, very strong, OP or whatever, just because he's very mobile. But it's not just that. As soon as you hit level ten, and as soon as you can pick up Wild Charge, you can literally just delete people. Wall Charge, you have to couple Wall Charge with Spark. If you land a Spark, or a Discharge, or what have you, if you land another ability prior to using Wall Charge, you would basically deal more increased damage, and you would hit more times. You know what I mean? Like, So if you don't land Spark on a target before you Wall Charge, and you Wall Charge somebody without doing that, you would do less damage overall. But while you're inside Wall Charge animation, guess what? You can't be hurt. You avoid everything. Which, people think that's pretty overpowered. And it is. But at the same time, it's really good. You know what I mean? This Pokemon is so much fun to play, guys. Hopefully you guys pick him up and try to learn him. Make him your, like, top three junglers, give or take. If, if you only play center, you know? Pick him. Learn his kit. Get him down. You will have a lot more success with your games overall. Just by learning him and picking up game sense. You want to be around for Dreadnought. You want to be around for Rotom. You want to be around for um, for Bees. And if you can't, if you can't get down to uh, Dreadnought at all times, if you know your team isn't going to like win that you know that trade, 
considering like this match right here, we don't have a tank. It's a lot harder for us to go down and secure it, for example. If you know you can't get it, don't stop farming. Go back to farming. You know what I mean? Go back to trying to push top lane. Go back, do something that's productive. Instead of wasting your time going to an objective that you know that you won't be able to win due to where your teammates are on that said map, or you don't have a tank at that time, be mindful what you're doing. Always have a plan, all right? No matter what. So I'm sitting here trying to get my jungle buffs and stuff. I see my teams going down there taking, you know, trying to trying to score a little bit. That's fine. But up here, Sinner's just having problems. So me being level 10, I go up here and just assert dominance because what else can I do other than assert dominance in top lane right now? I come up here, I get kills. We take down Snorlax. That's wild charge right there, by the way. He couldn't hit me. He couldn't do anything. No CC can touch me. He just takes free damage. Lucario is going to jump over here. Sinners also sees it, which is nice. We end up taking this kill as well because, you know, hey, we're level 11 now. We can pretty much do whatever we want in terms of nobody's going to 1v1 me in this scenario right now on their team. Besides maybe Snorlax, you know? Maybe. But at the end of the day right now, we are so fed. And we're doing quite well in terms of damage and our rotations are doing quite well. I'm, I try to group up a little bit with when I play Zahora, depending on my team composition. And again, we don't have a tank, so it's a lot harder to stand behind somebody, and I kind of just got to go in, you know what I mean, in this aspect. I want to get this cap down here because we haven't gotten one yet. My team's been struggling a little bit. And again, they successfully got Dreadnought because they do have a Snorlax, and they had three people down there already. My team's up top lane. I guess they push Rotom. That's fine. But again, they haven't touched Rotom yet, so I don't know what they were doing in that aspect. But, again, this is the joy of playing solo queue. Again, always play solo queue, guys. Solo queue is a lot better than playing in groups. Just because playing by yourself, you can struggle. You can learn a lot more from losing a game than winning a game. You know what I mean? Like, It's a lot harder to carry games in solo queue than it is to win in solo queue. If that makes sense. Or to win in group play. If that makes sense. So this right here, I'm trying to confuse what Wiggly was doing. She literally just ran in. I thought she was going to run in and bring them to me, but she just ran in there. So I wait for a second. Wait for uh, Curlia to get up here and do some DPS before I just jump in here. This is a really bad position for me to be in right now because no one else is up here next to me. It's fine, though. We end up picking up the kill. I uh, scare Snorlax, get him away from my team. So I split them up a little bit. And I don't know what I was thinking in this scenario. Like, I should have just rolled out. Like, But instead, I stayed here and I get a uh, power bolt. I deserve that. You know, that was me throwing something. That was me throwing right there in that sense. But at the same time, my team ended up taking out Rotom and stuff. So that was good, right? I felt bad for this Machamp, like, all game. I felt like this might have been his first Machamp game or he just learning the Pokemon, which is fine and all. But just don't pick up and learn a Pokemon and play Master Rank. That makes no sense. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I mean, he's dead. Go figure. And my team is also not in a good position here. Here we go. Center is by himself. He gets blown up again. So I can I can do this. I can go in here and kill people. Just because, like I said, I have wild charge and I have a lot of escapes. Now I'm, I'm SOL, right? Because my jack button's on cooldown. I can't dash out. I can't jump out. So now Zapdos is uh, about to win the game. You know what I mean? But, but now it's my team. They don't give up. Like, they keep coming in, which is good, right? Gardevoir does not have an ulti, which is unfortunate. I mean, what else are you going to do in this situation, right? You get mowed down inside the choke point. Now, keep in mind, I have all my abilities up right here. But champ is probably about to get killed, which, yeah, no figure, no problem, right? I saw that coming. So, essentially, I'm in a 1v5 scenario, which ain't good. Like, no way... No way how am I going to be, be able to do this by myself. But I keep going. Because my team is coming back here. I am distracting Lucario and uh, Cramorant. I ended up getting in there. Getting some damage off on Zapdos. Securing Zapdos here for our team. And we end up coming back for this game. Like, the amount of work I did in the early game, I think. Especially ganking some of the early game lanes being there for certain objectives it really does make a difference because not not so much in the game per se 
but like in your team aspect because like I said these games are 10 minutes right the first eight minutes don't matter so by actually trying and not just like ah, I quit I give up blah 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 it allows your team to some of them hang on for a little bit if that makes any sense you know like oh we can still win type ordeal like with that mindset as long as you have that mindset you don't give up by the time that those spawns you still have a chance of winning and hopefully everyone else can realize that too. Just the first eight minutes mean absolutely nothing until Zapdos spawns, right? Never give up. Just keep playing. Try to get your experience, man. Try to do the best as you can, right? Be Just be there for the objectives. All you have to do, essentially. But hey, man, this has been Paul's Plays. Hopefully you guys are going to enjoy playing Zohar. Please pick him up in the jungle, man. Learn his kick. Get him down. He's a lot of fun. He will carry you guys through the rankings. I promise, man. This has been Paul's Plays. I will catch you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for a lot of Pokemon Unite content to come up. All right, man. I'm out.